So I'm here to talk about how we are trying to figure out how to measure retention at Blinkist and how much of a long and hard road this is. Um, so first, for any of you who don't know, Blinkist is a mobile app uh, that has key insights from the world's best nonfiction books uh, brought to you in text and audio in about 15 minutes. Um, but really, our, our ambition is bigger than this. Um, what we really want to become is the lifelong learning app uh, for people who want to learn on the go. So we want to create all kinds of learning opportunities for people, whether they have two minutes while they're waiting in line, or they're in their commute, or they're at the gym, there's always something that they can take away and something they can learn and be inspired by. That's not a good sound. Um, there we go. Um, so uh, like most companies, when Blick is first started, we were very focused on growth. And that means we were very focused on conversion and lifting up conversion numbers. So we're running a lot of different experiments, trying to get those numbers up. Um, and we started to see after a while that the payoff was kind of tapering off. Um, so we realized at this point we really needed a bigger breakthrough to keep growing the business. And we came up with this idea that we called the soft paywall. So really, this was very simple. We just added a free trial at the beginning of our subscription period. And fortunately, what we saw is the, the payoff was really large. Um, we had over 50% improvement in conversion numbers, um, and this was really like a major breakthrough for the company at the time, and we thought, great, like we, we figured everything out, now everything is gonna be easy. Um, of course it wasn't. You know, a few months later, when we started to look at retention numbers, we saw that they dropped dramatically in that time. Um, and in retrospect, I think this makes a lot of sense, because as you increase conversion, you often do that by bringing in more low intent users, and some of those users are just not gonna stick around. They're less likely to keep using your product, and so your retention is very likely to go down as you improve conversion. But for us, the realization was, okay, we now can't just focus on growth. We have to start thinking about retaining our users as well um, and build up expertise in this area. But what do we do, right? Um, we've never really focused on this before, and we didn't really know how to measure this. So with conversion, we knew exactly what the numbers are, how to look at them, how to understand them, but with retention, there were a lot of different options and a lot of different numbers we could look at, and it was pretty you know, confusing and hard to figure out where do we start, um, how do we do this in an agile way. So we decided to start simple. Um, we wanted to find a metric that measures business value, so it actually tells us that we're growing the business but also a metric that measures user value and tells us we're actually building something good for our users and that these things are not in conflict. Um, and so we started doing more research on this, um, kind of found out at the time about this idea of a North Star metric, uh, which basically fits exactly what we wanted to do, and we decided to focus on time spent and content. Um, so it was really just a guess at the time, but we kind of made this assumption that, look, we're a learning app, we want to deliver value to our users by helping them learn, and so the more time they spend with us, the more they learn, the more value they get. Um, and also, reasonably, we think the more time they spend, the more likely they are to keep coming back, because clearly there is some value there for them. Um, from a technical perspective, it took us a little bit uh, of time to actually build this, you know, for lots of different reasons, but eventually we got this up and running, we started using it, um, but then we kind of started to think, is this really the right thing? Um, so first of all, we'd assumed that user goal was to just spend as much time as possible and learn as much as possible. But if you really think about Blinkist and you think about the sort of brand proposition that we have, it's not just about spending a lot of time, it's about spending your time well and spending your time efficiently. Um, we really try to make learning available in the spaces you already have in your life versus asking you to create additional time and space for learning. So time spent might not actually be a good reflection of what people come to Blinkist for. We're also starting to think about creating new types of content of different lengths to fit different learning scenarios. So some might be really short, some might be really long, um, and we basically realized that if we're always optimizing for time spent, we're always going to prioritize longer content because once people start it, they're more likely to consume it for a longer time. And so actually this metric is not super aligned with our goals as a product and where we think the product should go. And then the last thing, and this might seem very obvious, but we never actually looked at correlation with renewal. We just assumed that it was there, but we never took the step back and said, does time spent actually predict renewal, or is it just an assumption that we made? Um, and so this, this happened very recently that we kind of hit upon this, 
And we're now considering a different metric that we want to use, um, uh, this time frequency, because we think this actually might be a better measure of all of the things that we talked about. So first of all, we recently ran some analysis that showed that users who successfully create a habit and actually use the product in a repeatable way over and over are more likely to retain and renew. And so it really points to frequency as a measure of habit creation. We also think that in the end, um, whether you come to us for two minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, as long as you learn something, as long as you're kind of inspired, that's really the value. It's not about the time you spend. And so again, if you're just coming back often, to us, that is a good predictor of whether you're getting value, even if you're not sticking around for super long. Um, so right now, actually, just before coming up here, I was slacking back and forth with um, one of the members of our BI team because she's currently running an analysis to see how these different metrics compare to long-term retention and renewal. Um, we're trying to figure this out, and then this will help us figure out what the North Star metric should be. So I was told that I need a profound closing statement to wrap up a lightning talk so that you actually remember what I talked about. Um, so what is the statement for, for this? Well, to me, it's actually not about a specific metric. It's more that metrics, as much as product itself, should be agile. You're never going to, I think, find one metric and it's going to work forever and you could just rely on it. Um, I think metrics, first of all, you need to test them, just like you would test product, and confirm that they work well and meet the needs that you need them to meet. But also, the metrics you need to use will change over time. As your product changes, as your customer base changes, as your business model changes, you also need to make sure that you are looking at what you're measuring and making sure you adapt it as you go along. Um, and it's not an easy process, so don't feel discouraged. Um, this takes time, this takes effort, uh, and I, I believe that no one ever really figures it out. It's something you have to continue to work on over and over. Thank you.